if you guys can tell by my eyes, but it's morning. It actually happens to be morning in Frankfurt, Germany. Um, I was just in Berlin for IFA, and now Braun invited me to come to where their headquarters are here in Frankfurt to check out something I'm actually kind of excited about. The event I'm excited about is actually tomorrow, and it's called Braun Prize. It's a competition for product design that was started by Braun in 1968 with Edwin Braun, the son of Braun's founder, Max Braun. And it was originally created to help spark the public debate about design and its role in products, back when design was often an overlooked component of a product. And I like to think that we're a lot more design conscious nowadays. So what it is today about is uh, promoting the work of young designers, whether those are students or people who have recently graduated and are now working in the field. But that's tomorrow. Today we're at the Braun House, where Braun has taken out of their archives a ton of products from the almost century of creating these things. And I don't know what you're thinking. How many razors can you fit into a house? It turns out though that even though razors are a huge part of their business model nowadays, they've actually created and even pioneered some designs of a ton of products. From blenders to toasters to kettles, coffee machines, watches, thermometers, the first ever radio record player combo, the first custom made LCD on a watch, one of the first digital alarm clocks, the first automated slide projector, to of course, the first ever electric shaver to feature a steel foil over the cutting block. A design that's been copied by other manufacturers the world over and is still used by Braun and others to this day, even though it was designed by Braun in 1938. And there were a ton more. And the thing that amazes me is that throughout the Braun house and even the archives that we visited a little bit after that, a lot of the products looked like they could just still be in use today. Look at these kitchen appliances. And tell me that you don't want this record player. All of these things were designed in the 50s. Now, if you're a design student, you know where I'm about to go with this, as well as the name that I'm about to mention. Dieter Rand. Now, Rams was a designer at Braun in the 50s and eventually became the head of design for Braun in 1961 and kept that role until his retirement in 1995. During that time, he became a key figure in the German design renaissance of the 50s and 60s, and he even came up with a set of 10 design principles that are taught to this day in design school and even used as a guide by some of the most iconic design companies of our current time, including one I think you've heard of, Apple. Johnny Ive, the head of design at Apple, has widely praised Rams in the past, saying that his work was bold, pure, perfectly proportioned, coherent, and effortless. And saying that, at a glance, you knew exactly what it was and exactly how to use it. And Rams himself was quoted in the Telegraph as responding with, I have always regarded Apple products and the kind words Johnny Ive has said about me and my work as a compliment. And saying about Apple that, Without doubt, there are few companies in the world that genuinely understand and practice the power of good design in their products and their businesses. When you look at Apple products even today, there are some uncanny resemblances between them and Braun products of the past. The original iPod, design-wise, looks a lot like Braun's T3 pocket radio. And the calculator app on the iPhone from back in the day? Well, that's the Braun ET44 calculator from the 70s. And the list goes on actually, with entire articles on sites devoted to all of the similarities between their products. So needless to say, Braun's design principles are clearly still in use today. And I think we can all agree that their design credentials aren't questionable. With that said, let's head to Braun Prize now, so we can see how those design principles are helping young and up and coming designers uh, not only make really interesting examples of good design, but also try to help the world in the process. Now in Braun Prize, the winners get a portion of the $75,000 total cash prize, depending on the category that they're in. Any of the student category winners also get an internship in the Braun Design Department if they choose so, and they all get to keep the rights to all of their products and are showcased through international press across the board. And even Dieter Rams himself is in the audience. Now the winners for this Braun Prize included products like these interactive stroke therapy devices that help stroke victims stay motivated in retraining their affected side once they are sent home, which is an essential part 
of them actually being able to get to recovery. An asthma inhaler that can detect the user's exhaling in real time and then adjust the medication they receive from inhaling, which is kind of clever. An idea to help convert pollution in polluted cities while using advertising to negate the cost with these devices to a foldable, minimal bike trailer and even a way to monitor low birth weight in children in India and a ton of other things. There we go. Um, that was Braun Prize and kind of a little bit of the history of Braun design, which I was fascinated about. And I'm really thankful that Braun brought me over there to learn all of that. Um, and yeah, it's kind of, kind of cool, especially like the link to Apple and like all that stuff. I thought it was super interesting. I hope you guys did too. Um, if you want more information on Braun, their design program, their design prize, all of that fun stuff, uh, I left a couple of links below for anybody that's interested in checking that out. Otherwise, though, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of it, what you think of Braun and all these other stuff. Did you learn something? Do you like these type of videos as well? Maybe I'll do more. Let me know. Always nice to hear from you guys. And if you like this video, though, please thumbs up or share it. It's greatly appreciated. And if you want more videos like this, please check out the rest of my channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe. And hit the bell next to the word subscribe so you can notify when I do new videos. As always, though, regardless, thanks for watching.